That one. David Leete, um, we've had a, a lot of time sort of with COVID planning around Olympics. Just, I guess, first of all, where is that at for you? Uh, with Olympics, we working towards it, um, building towards the Olympics. Uh, the goal is the Olympics um, and it will go ahead. Uh, we have been told that by NZOC and um, it's just gonna be a bit different because it's more gonna be like going into a hospital instead of going into a you know sports facility and, and things like that. But I'm excited for it. It's gonna be one of a kind and um, I'm gonna be happy to be a part of history, you know? Yeah, I guess it is going to be one of a kind. Like when you think about the Olympics, you think you know, huge filled-out stadiums, huge media pits, and I guess there's going to be none of none of that this time. Yeah, um, the crowd is one of the most important things for weightlifting because mm. that's what gets you pumped. And when the crowd is excited, you're excited. Um, and so that being taken away from us is going to be uh, funny as well. But I guess we just have to make do with what we have and be grateful that they're actually going to let us compete instead of um, just cancelling. Yeah, that's a good way to look at yeah. it. When you talk about the crowd and weightlifting, I mean, personally, I've never even been to a weightlifting thing. <laughs> I've, I watched the Commonwealth Games, of course, pretty much watch all that stuff. But in terms of being there, just what is it like as a competitor with that energy from the crowd? Um, I haven't been to Olympics yet, and I'm not sure what the atmosphere is like. But at the Commonwealth Games, that was unreal, you know, the atmosphere, um, especially from an Australian um, spectator's view. Uh, we always have the Australians booing the New Zealanders and New Zealanders booing Australians, but when they came out, man, they were on board, they were loud, they were cheering and um, happy that I was there. And I guess if I could feel that excited in a competition that's not as big as Olympics, I can only imagine how good Olympics can be, you know? Yeah, talking about the Commonwealth Games, I remember like not a lot of people have heard of you before that, and then you come out and win gold medal, lift what over 400 kgs, basically just work your way into the hearts of, of everyone. <laughs> like, what was that experience like for you? Um, I knew that I came in ranked fourth. Um, I took a chunk of 2017 off because of sickness. And so that kind of drove everything downwards. And I mean, for me, popularity doesn't mean anything, you know, it's not gonna um, feed me or do anything like that. But I think it was exciting because nobody knew that me being ranked fourth with a lower total than the other three, um, I could have a chance or have a shot. And just to come out on top of all of that, um, I think it's just, you know, kind of one of those things where if you can't earn me out, learn to count, you know? I mean, anybody has a shot, nobody earns winning, and um, I'm just glad everything went the way it did, and I'm happy that I put the work in for it, and the rest is history. Absolutely, and how did you get onto weightlifting as your sport? Uh, one of my boys from uh, high school, um, he had a friend that did weightlifting, and he came over to school, and and told us we should do this because the weightlifting gym that we I'm at now <clears throat> uh, does a free program with the school. So we went over thinking we're gonna do bicep girls to get massive um, biceps and bench press to get massive chests. Um, and we were introduced to do um, to doing snatches. <laughs> and we're like, man, what the hell is this? You know, it's boring and tiring. And so it wasn't like a week or two after like we all quit. There was 20 of us that showed up and then no one by the end of that time. But I guess it was them realizing that I had something in weightlifting that brought me back. And then I wanted to become stronger for rugby and instead I got stronger for weightlifting and then ditched rugby. So now I'm, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm kind of stuck in weightlifting. It's now I do what I want to do, yeah. What is it like sort of training for weightlifting as opposed to training for rugby? Like what, what are the sort of different weights that you, I guess, do more often than? than uh, I guess for rugby, it's more of that stuff was like fitness. Um, but I haven't, as, as, a, as a kid, I wasn't developed enough to know anything about rugby ment uh, mentally and physically and stuff like that. 
And so with weightlifting, more of it's actually mentally, not actually strength and, and stuff like that. So I guess the difference is I wasn't so matured at the time, but now that I've learned through weightlifting and everything, that I think, I'm not sure, you know, like I could have taken it on, but not succeeded as much, or I could have and then succeeded just as much, but I guess we'll never know because I went down a different road. Yeah, yeah and you don't really want to look back now. I mean, I mean, weightlifting seems to be working pretty well for you. Yeah, weightlifting is fun, you know, it's crazy how much um, I've done since I've started weightlifting. And especially as a kid, I wanted to travel. So weightlifting has got me to do that, all of that stuff. And I didn't actually miss running, you know? Running is just not for me. And yeah, I, I think I'll give up world rugby a hundred more times to do weightlifting. Yeah, I think saying no running might sell weightlifting to a few more people, <laughs> yeah. kind of the young guys coming up who don't really want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, with, with weightlifting, just watching the videos of you doing what you're doing, I mean, my knees start aching. Like, what is a general day like for you? Like, how do you look after your body? Uh, I sleep a lot, actually. Um, people always message me saying, oh, what's your diet like? You know, what's your recovery like? And I'm, I'm normal, you know? I'm just a normal kid from the south, uh, south side. And I eat whatever I want to eat. And then I sleep as much as I can because I sleep a lot. and try and swim here and there and um, being able to, to get where I am now I'm privileged to have things like massages and physios for free and things like that so I guess that helps because as an islander we always think like we either hard enough or we don't you know but there are some things that um, do help us that um, we don't actually want to admit to so I guess um, training all the time seven times a week with a, uh, throughout five days um, and getting massages and um, physio and yeah just trying to fit in a swim because that's what I like to do. What was it like when you were first starting out like when you it didn't have boring. the... Yeah. Yeah. Um, mentally it was draining and stuff um, physically I felt good um, especially as a kid developing my body and to what I am now I feel like it's just not as interesting as rugby or soccer or nipples in the day, you know, because it's team sports. Um, and I'm glad that I've strong-minded to do my own thing and, and try something different, even though some days are lonely, it's, it's what it is, you know? What would your advice be for to maybe get younger kids maybe at least thinking about weightlifting as a, as a path in sports? Uh, all I would have to say is give it a shot. You know? um, if you give it a shot, you never know where you'll end up. And if you end up liking it, you'll like it. And if you don't, that's all right. You know? Try something new. Yeah. In terms of doing the weights, do you have a, a favorite that you that you like? Uh, starting off, I used to love the clean and jerk. Um, just because I was stronger in that and I was hitting bigger numbers than I was in um, snatches. But where I'm at now, I've kind of like snatches are just a little bit more only because it's instant, you know, and then it's finished. With clean jerks, you have to lift it up, hold it, then jerk, and then hold it, but where snatch is just up, catch it, and that was it, you know? So, I'm not sure. I like both the lifts, but if I was to say which one I would like out of all the lifts that I do, I'd probably say front squats. Yeah. Yeah. Front squats, eh? <laughs> I don't know, many people would say squats, <laughs> would they? And I don't a lot know, of people just, don't like squats. It's just fun and it's easier than back squats and then, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Going back to the mentality and like the focus you need in the sport, particularly with the clean and jerk when you're competing, when you are on stage and you've got to do that extra thrust to get it up, do you have to sort of talk yourself through it while you've sort of got it resting? Or? I think a lot of people is different. They've got um, different types of rituals or whatever you would say you know um, because starting off the competition you must snatch first and some people they snatch really well and that carries on to weight uh, to clean jerks well 
and some people don't snatch really well and they've just given up from there and not even bother with the clean jacks so it really depends on the people and especially you coming off the ground that's what you got to think of fresh before you even catch the bar and then if you are lucky to get get up after the the catch um to wait for the jerk i think a lot of people do think differently but for me it's just following the rhythm it's a dip drive and punch and that's simple don't want it to overcomplicate it and make it seem like it's a harder job than it actually is where's the your favorite place that you've been able to travel to with this sport or favorite competition that you've competed there's, in? there's a lot of um, places that i've liked um Anaheim in America was nice, but I gained uh, 11 kilos in seven days after competing because of all the food and stuff. Um, Turkmenistan was good. Uh, like scenery and everything was out of it, you know. Um, food was super cheap and we got to go to um, the Hell of Gates, which is uh, the Gates of Hell, which is um, uh, this massive dome thing that collapsed down and it's been burning since the 70s, you know? Um, and I'm not sure, a lot of places have been good, like even Australia, you know, um, they have kangaroo pies, those are nice. They're almost like as good as steak and cheese here. But um, I think out of all the places I've been to, I've, I've always found it better at home here in New Zealand. You know, competition's just, it just hits different when you're here in New Zealand. And you get more support and you know your people's watching you. you know? Fair enough, and uh, career bests. What, what are you, you want to boast about uh, what you can lift? <laughs> I've snatched 182 kilos and have clean and jerk 232. Yeah. That's, a, that's a lot of weight. <laughs> How recently were those? Uh, those were last year in, I think, November. Maybe November, maybe a bit earlier. Um, for our New Zealand Nationals. Um, yeah, and it was, it was a good build up and I was expecting more, but I mean, you have to make do with what you have. Mm. I imagine that the build up for the Olympics probably would have been a little bit hampered. Like, yeah. how have you had to reset for, for that? Uh, for me, it's simple, you know, like, I don't like to overcomplicate things and make it seem like it's bigger than it is. Um, and so when the cancellation of what um, postponal of Olympics came around, I just thought of it as I get more time to um, prepare, to give a bit of me a shot at, at these these weights and at, against all these people around the world. And so, yeah, I don't I didn't find that um, draining mentally or physically as I just knew that it was giving me more time to prepare. Now, just finally, we'll do a little bit of a, a get to know David Leedy uh, category. Right. Uh, favorite food? I like lu, which you... is a island of traditional um, taro leaves kind of food. Yeah. <clears throat> Can you compare the, the taste of that to, to something? Like... Uh, it's almost like having silver beet with meat. Okay. Yeah. All right. Favorite sports team? Ooh, that's a hard one. Um, I'll just say All Blacks. Yeah. yeah, they're really good. Favorite athlete? Favorite athlete? Oof. Uh, New Zealand most inspirational athlete for me would be, and favorite would be Valerie Adams, Dame Valerie Adams. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Why Dame? Uh, she represents a lot for our Pacifica Brown people, and she always, you know, says that if she can do it, we can do it too. Um, so, for me, that's what I want to do. Um, as an athlete as well. I want to follow that kind of footsteps and let our people know that we can be whatever we want to be and succeed just as much. I imagine growing up you probably didn't want to be a weightlifter when you were a little kid. What did you want to be? Uh, as a little kid I thought I always thought I'd end up as a farmer because uh, my family is a big farming family um, and so I just thought I'll just finish high school and go straight into farming and opportunity is not that big in, in Tonga. Um, and so when I came to New Zealand, it kind of opened my eyes to a lot more things. Like um, I've always wanted to be a policeman, uh, either that or play rugby or be a fireman. But I ended up being a weightlifter, so I don't know how that happened. <laughs>
how how big a transition was it for you coming from Tonga to New Zealand? Uh, major, um, especially the cold. Uh, when we came, it was starting spring, so I was freezing, and I just thought I was gonna die the first night here. Um, but after a little while, I kind of survived and thought, I mean, this place ain't so bad. So. So and just finally, outside of New Zealand, if you could travel to one place right now, where would you go? I would go to Hawaii. Nice, warm, good beaches. Go for a swim every day. <laughs> Easy. Well, thank you very much, David Leedy, and hopefully we get to see you uh, at the Olympics in the not-too-distant future. <laughs> All right.